What's up, everybody? I am Denver Gamer, and today we're taking a look at PlayStation 2 ha, Hidden Gems. Now, call them what you will. Disguised jewels, obscure games, underrated games, games that flew under the radar. But today, they're games that you might not have heard of, and I definitely think that you should play. So if you like this video, comment on this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Okay, let's kick off this list with Downhill Domination. This is an incredible mountain biking downhill arcade racer. I guess that's the best way to put it. It has elements of games like Road Rash, where you can throw punches and kicks at the other mountain bikers. It has elements of a kart racer where you can pick up power-ups and throw things at your competition on the tracks, which are absolutely huge, by the way. The tracks are enormous. You can do tricks in midair, kind of like the old snowboarding games of the era, like SSX. I mean, this really brought a very unique game to the PS2, where it was an arcade-style mountain biking game, and it's just kind of one of a kind for the time. The gameplay is absolutely ridiculous. This game wants you to fall off your bike, hit trees. They put animals and people like hikers and cars in the way, anything to make you fall off your bike, and everything is very high-octane downhill white knuckle thrill ride i highly recommend this game and right now in 2023 it's still very cheap to get considering the prices of other playstation 2 games so definitely check this one out let's talk about sky gunner sky gunner is a cinematic steampunk dog fighting arcade style third person flight sim that's a mouthful this game was brought over from Japan by Atlas and has a very unique anime art style. I absolutely love the setting, the feel of the game. The combat is fantastic. The sound effects are very, very immersive, and the soundtrack has a very high adventure tune to it. The voice acting is very good, and you actually have an option to have the Japanese voice acting with English subtitles as well. I, you don't see that on many PS2 games. Again, this game is stunning and gorgeous, and the art style just works with it. I mean, it really all fits together very well. You know, it's a shame that it didn't get a lot of recognition at the time. I think it's a little more well-known now, but still, you know, a, a hidden gem for sure. Next up, we've got God Hand, and if you watch my channel, you know I love beat-em-ups. This game is probably in my top 10 of PS2 games. I absolutely love this game. So this is a third-person beat-em-up that locks the camera behind the main character. So you only use the left thumbstick for movement, but that frees up the right thumbstick for dodging, bobbing, and weaving. It is really, really cool. There are all types of power moves in this game. Some are absolutely funny because you can kick people in the nuts, and what makes it funny? Because they're not your nuts. You can customize your moveset and combos. It has a cheesy story and cheesy voice acting. If you're a more serious gamer, maybe this wouldn't be for you, but it is so cheesy, it is epic. It might have some problems with walls disappearing and stuff with the camera moving behind the character, but if you can look past that, this is absolutely awesome. All right, it's time to add an action RPG to this list. This is Radiata Stories. It was published by Square Enix, and they had it developed by Tri-Ace. Now, Tri-Ace is the same developer that did Star Ocean and Valkyrie Profile. Radiata Stories' graphics have aged very, very well over the years. They have that kind of cartoony look to them for the time, so they look really good in PC SX2, a PlayStation 2 emulator. And this game is absolutely hilarious. It had me literally laughing out loud. You play the main protagonist, Jack Russell is his name, which is absolutely absurd. And the humor is just done really, really well in this game. The thing that makes this game stand out is that it has 176 recruitable characters. Some characters you can unlock just by talking to them, other ones you have to duel or do fetch quests, but there is a insane amount of recruitable characters and NPCs to add to your party. The characters also have daily schedules and you can follow them around and kind of peer into their everyday lives, which unravel even more and more depth to their stories. It's just a game that you can play for hours and hours with multiple endings, highly recommended. 
Robot Alchemic Drive or Rad is an absolutely ridiculous game with terrible voice acting, to be quite frank with you, but it is so unique, I actually really like this game. You run around as a person that has to control a mech by remote control as it fights kaijus. You'll find yourself running to the tops of buildings and even jumping up on top of its shoulder while you fight these monsters in Tokyo. I've always been kind of a sucker for that sci-fi, big monsters fighting in cities kind of thing like Godzilla, but this was done in video game form for the PlayStation 2, and I really, really loved it. Now, like I said before, the voice acting is absolutely terrible, but that's what gives it its charm. I am a sucker for that terrible voice acting. Mech Kaiju Remote Control Battles, everybody. Okay, next up we have Trapped. Now this is gonna be a difficult one to describe, but basically Trapped is a survival horror puzzle game with tactical RPG elements. This is one of the games in the Deception series from the original PlayStation, and with the last one I believe being on the PlayStation 4. You play as Princess Allura, who is accused of murdering her father, King Olaf, by her evil stepmother, Catalina. In this game, you have to run away from the enemies who are trying to assassinate you and set traps as you go. Now you have three types of traps. You have wall, floor, and ceiling traps, and you can only take a certain amount of the different traps into the game for each stage and each room. So it makes it very tactical and puzzle-like, but also has that survival horror feel. It's really a cool, unique game. You're not gonna find a lot of these. I felt like the Deception series is just not something that's talked about a lot. So definitely one to check out if you're into kind of quirky, interesting horror games. Wow, so the next game I have for you guys is the Red Star. This is a 2D run and gun shoot 'em up game. And what makes this really interesting is that it's an absolute thrill ride, but your angles in this game change as you go through different levels. You can have a top down angle, a side scrolling angle, and even kind of like shoot 'em up levels. So it's awesome. It was originally based off of a comic book. You have three playable characters to choose from, all with different abilities and pros and cons. But where this game really shines is the two-player co-op. This game is fantastic to play with friends. I cannot stress that enough. It does get progressively harder as you go through the game. You will get to bullet hell segments, but wow, this is just aged really well. Highly, highly recommended. All right, I wanna take you guys back to a game that I feel like has been so forgotten. This is Sega Soccer Slam. It is an arcade sports game. It was out on the PS2. It was cross-platform. It was on the Xbox and the GameCube, but I had to mention it in this video because I had so much fun playing this when I was younger. This is a full contact soccer game or football game for everybody else in the world with brawl mechanics. It's like the game Blitz meets a arcade soccer game. It is pretty awesome. The game has teams from all over the world, some of them unlockable, different modes, cool power-ups, and controls that are just really, really great. It's been pretty interesting to me putting together this video and realizing that a lot of the games that aged well have that cartoony caricature uh, look to them. They look pretty damn good. I, I have been really impressed. So if you haven't heard of this, it's pretty cheap. Go pick it up. If you like hack and slash games, I highly recommend Bujing Guy, The Forsaken City. This is a 3D hack and slash game, which is very similar to Devil May Cry or Ninja Gaiden Black. Again, of course, the voice acting is terrible and it makes it feel like a old translated Kung Fu movie. The story is kind of bizarre. You are coming back to earth after an apocalypse has, I don't know, destroyed people and the ones that survived got powers from the earth and you're coming back from space to battle demons. It's, it's kind of weird but there are a lot of good hack and slash games on the PlayStation 2, but this one just goes overlooked. 
The soundtrack, by the way, is totally badass. It's very metal. It involves a Japanese musician named Gact. I don't really know much about it, but he kind of is the basis for the main character as well. So dive into that a little more. But if you want a hack and slash game that allows you to build your skills and magical powers through the game, don't overlook this one. All right, let's wrap up this list with Echo Night Beyond. This is a survival horror game set in space. You are Richard and you are traveling with your wife, Claudia, to go on your honeymoon at a resort on the moon. And some supernatural force causes your shuttle to crash land at a research center. You wake up and everybody's gone on the shuttle and you'll find out soon enough that they are all dead and are ghosts wandering around this research station. This game may not be for everybody and it is very expensive. I highly recommend playing it any way you can. The controls are a little sluggish and funky the way they are mapped out, but it's the atmosphere of this game is where it's at. It is a really, really good story. And as you progress through the game, you will find you will have to bring ghosts that you come across personal items of theirs so they can kind of disappear and be satisfied. There are evil ghosts that can kill you, by the way, but you don't have any weapons in this game. You will literally be scared to death. So it's one of those games where you have to run and hide. Now, again, it's a little sluggish. I wish the controls were a little tight and faster, but for a great storyline, this was made from, from software. They've done many other great games. This is one of their earlier games. I recommend this one. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Let me know down in the comments what PlayStation 2 hidden gems you have found. And right here you can see I'm putting up some info cards with other videos I do that are similar, like ROM hacks and fan games and weird games and all types of stuff. I'll leave some more videos at the end and other social media that you can connect with me on. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next video. Thank you so much for watching guys. If you want to connect outside of YouTube, I do have a Twitter where I post video game stuff and top 10 lists, as well as an Instagram where you can see my collection and pickups. I also have a TikTok. You can see Groot, Rocket, and Gamora, my Great Danes, and shorter videos. And I also have a Facebook page you can follow as well. So I look forward to connecting with you.